Well, thanks, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Samuel Gamboa, who is, and uh, in fact, to welcome you to the uh, metagenomics uh, short talk series, metagenomics and cancer short talk series of the uh, Bioconductor 2022 conference. Samuel Gamboa is uh, working with Levi Waldron's lab at CUNY, and he'll be speaking about a resource of microbiome benchmark data sets with biological ground truth. Thank you, Samuel. Hi, thank you, Vincent. Uh, okay. All right. Well, I would like to start by speaking a little bit, a little bit about differential abundance analysis, which is uh, like the major focus of, of this work. Uh, well, it's a kind of a statistical approach uh, aimed mainly to identify microbes that are associated with a given condition or a given body site, um, sometimes for the purpose of identifying biomarkers or signatures. So uh, and this method has some challenges, and these challenges usually come from the type of data itself, such as the uh, high compositionality or uh, sparsity. Uh, where these data, set, this type of data, are compositional, and so uh, an array of methods have been used to tackle this and have been implemented to identify differential abundant. Uh, features of, tax, of, tax, of taxa, which go from classical statistical tests like Utoxone, this test, uh, some of them are compositional, which are based in the central lobe radio transformation. Uh, other methods implement their own normalization transformation methods, just as metagenomic. And there are some other methods borrowed from the fields of RNA-seq and seq rna -seq. Uh, Well, bottom line here is that there is no a consensus method or approach, so uh, pretty much uh, there has to be some kind of benchmark before using any of these methods. So uh, another uh, limitation that exists right now for the development of these differential abundance methods is that the limited options for benchmark data sets. Uh, so commonly uh, these data sets that are used come from uh, simulation data sets, which often do not reflect the complexity of biological data sets. Uh, some biological data sets are used, but some of them uh, lack of a biological ground truth. So, so uh, the, the researchers cannot really know if their results are correct or not, because it just comes from a statistical analysis. And on the other hand, some uh, other data sets are not real, we are viable, or reusable. So to tackle this, uh, we are uh, creating a collection of data sets, uh, which have been described in literature, and they are viable somehow. So we're standardizing these, and put all of these in a single resource. And well, uh, there are actually read three data sets, and one of them, the first that you see there, is presented in, in, in several versions. So uh, as you can see, they come from different body parts, the gingival, stool samples, and vagina, and they have different contrasts. Uh, this is important because it's assumed to be some differential, uh, differential uh, uh, abundance in this, in this, in this, uh, in these data sets. Uh, and they all have a like, ground truth that has been very well characterized in the literature, uh, not only through sequencing methods, uh, uh, but other approaches. Uh, for example, in the gingival uh, aerobic taxa, it's well known that's enriched in the supragingival plague, as opposed to the aerobic, uh, as opposed to the subgingival plague, which is enriched in anaerobic taxa. So uh, it's two samples, and we have a, this data set uh, that they're really, uh, the real uh, ground truth here is that has some spiking uh, bacteria. So these are exogenous, and there's an, they have been added in a fixed amount, and which is known. So this can be used to recalibrate the whole data set so we have ac accurate counts. And the last one comes from bacterial vaginosis, which is well known that they're probably the decrease in lactobacillus in the 
during bacterial vaginosis and an increase uh, of other taxa, such as Bernerella, etc. So, uh, well, uh, this collection of data sets is, is available and it's a novel uh, right now, uh, at least the first three data sets that you see there. Uh, we also uh, developing a package that is to be submitted to, to Bioconductor 3.16. Uh, in which the data sets are delivered as three summarized experiments. Uh, well, all the components of the, of the data sets are, are available. Use just the sample metadata, the ambulance matrix, taxonomy annotation, and the phylogenic tree for some cases. And this is to increase the FAIR, the findable, accessible, inter interoperable, and reusable approach for, for the data sets. So I would like to speak a, little, a, bit, a couple of cases of how we are using these data sets, just an example. And the first uh, that I want to mention is the bacterial vaginosis uh, data set. Uh, the, well, the data set has some experimental evidence which is based in an annotation of taxa, this, which have been isolated from, from bacterial vaginosis samples. Uh, so we know that it's, there should be uh, differential abundant. Uh, we have sample metadata that is also backed up by experimental approach, in this case, based on immune scores, which divides us in bacterial vaginosis and healthy, and healthy tissues. And all of the tags are annotated, so we have a reference. So we're using this for creating a, an enrichment analysis. So in this plot, we are comparing uh, several differential abundant methods and normalization methods here. Uh, we're comparing, we classify them into classical compositional metagenomics, RNA-seq, and single cell RNA-seq, which is what I present in the first slide. And well, on the left side, you can see that we have the expected biological ground truth, right? So we would expect that the methods would detect uh, bacteria associated with bacterial vaginosis up and with healthy vagina down. So as we can see in the plot that just by looking at the number of features, that most of them did find the taxa that we expected. But as you can see, some of the like the compositional methods also detected the bacteria that should be uh, up <laughs> in the other direction. So this is preliminary data, so I still had to do some digging there. But this is an example of how we think that this data set could be useful to, 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 to compare the, the, the outputs of the different differential outlet methods. And the other data set that I would like to talk about a little bit is about the standard 2016. Uh, this is called, as I mentioned, from the two samples uh, before and after allogeneic cell trans transplantation. Um, there are three. Uh, bacteria that were added exogenously, and Salinibacter, uh, ASD flus, and Rosovin radiobacter, which are totally exogenous to the stool sample, so we can pretty much sure that they're not there. And well, the authors, uh, or in, this, in the count data, well, we know the, how, much, how, many, how much of those bacteria are, so they can be used to be recalibrated. So we use this to compare uh, the coefficient of variation of com compositional and non-compositional data transformation with space central log radio transformation. And as you can see in the plot in the first panel, all right, uh, the recalibrated counts are, are, in this case, with salinibacter rubber, are, the variation is zero, which is expected because it's the same amount in all samples. So this would be the biological ground truth. And we compare the performance of the different normalization methods, and we see that, for example, uh, even a method that, that extended low radio, which is considered uh, appropriate for compositional data, didn't perform much better than the, the simpler, simpler approach, which is relative abundance. So we can see there's still a lot of variation here. And we see this also in the abundance of the other taxa. So so this is another example of how to use uh, one of these data sets for benchmarking uh, and compare the, the results. So well, summary and perspectives. Uh, well, 
we are expecting that this resource and this package will provide uh, these data sets which will be suitable for benchmarking differential abundant methods and to evaluate the correctness of discoveries because we already know uh, what to expect from them. Uh, we expect to add more of these data sets from different organisms and habitats so we can have an array of methods there. And what to increase the findability with these are in CINOL already and well, they will be submitted to Bioconductor. Well, thank you all for listening. Um, thanks to my co-authors and all the Water Lab and CUNY and the Research Foundation of CUNY for funding this. Thank you. Great, thanks, Samuel. We have a minute for one or two questions, if there are any. Yes. I think you would uh, go to the uh, microphone, and then others will be able to hear you, and you can come to take the response. Thank you for your talk. Um, I just had a question. It looks like your samples were the 16S subunit. Uh, using metagenomic shock and sequencing as well. Yes. Well, right now, thank you for for, us, for asking. Yeah, right now, uh, all the R16 except for one, the first is gingival. We have some metagenomic data there. Uh, yes, we do look for expanding this. So we're open to pro pro proposals of data sets to include. Uh, yes, and definitely including uh, also metagenomic data is, is, is in sight, and we would like to, to add those. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, and just like a follow-up question. I'm doing some, some similar type analysis with cancer, but do you think that there's room for like functional gene annotation or because of the way that bacteria share genes and things like that, if we specifically add genes that might drive a disease to try to make like a biomedical disease target? Uh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Could ah. I'm gonna repeat the question. If, if it, is this okay? Can everyone hear me if I'm this close? My my question was: Are you interested in taking this further into some type of functional gene annotation, not just like a taxonomical basis for interrelatedness between species? Uh, well, yes. Uh, thank you. Yes, we do I intend to. Well, the, the laboratory is working with a lot of annotations. Uh, I think the next talk is going to be related to that. And we also have other packages. And we're looking to ontologies as well. And yes, that would be nice to annotate the taxa based on functional, uh, on other functional features, not just the taxonomy. Yep, that's definitely uh, something that we would like to include, yes, in future data sets. And we look forward for, for that. Yep. Awesome. Thank you very much. No, thank you. All right. Thanks again, Samuel. We